Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking a look at a brand new game on the minimum system requirements at least as recommended by EA and the game of course is Star Wars Squadrons which I believe launched on October 2nd regardless it is available on Steam right now in fact I put a uh, link down below in case you're wanting to go and check it out on Steam because EA games are back on Steam regardless we're going to check it out with the minimum recommended system specs so yeah here we go. So before we get into the actual benchmarking of this particular title, I do want to point out a couple of things. First and foremost, unlike the last effort from EA, this Star Wars game looks like it's not going to be plagued by microtransactions and that sort of thing. So if you are a fan of those Star Wars games and you do like those space battles from some of the older Star Wars games, this one actually might be one to check out because not plagued with microtransactions and actually on Steam. Yeah, I mean, it, it's actually kind of nice. And not to get into a review of the game itself, but I did enjoy my time benchmarking this game. And this is gonna be a title that I do roll forward with some of my benchmarking as well with other GPUs that I do have coming down the road. So if you're not subscribed uh, and you wanna see some more benchmarks from uh, older cards like the GTX 1070 or a passive 1030, hit that sub button below. But getting back on track from that tangent, EA is recommending for this title as a minimum, you're running with a Ryzen 1300X. Now that's four cores and four threads on the original Zen architecture. I am substituting that out for a Ryzen 2200G, but it should be almost the exact same thing here because the 2200G was based on that original Zen architecture, it has four cores and four threads, and I am clocking it to the boost rating of the 1300X, so three 3.7 gigahertz on the 2200G. So the results should be pretty much identical as they would be with an actual 1300X. Eight gigabytes of system RAM is recommended from EA and I am running one stick of eight gigabytes of system RAM because I figure if we're doing the minimum specs, let's make it the worst case scenario for this Ryzen platform. So a one by eight kit running at 2400 megahertz. So this is like one of the worst memory configurations you could put eight gigabytes in a Ryzen system. And then the the GPU is a GTX 660 2 gigabyte card, which it is nice to see that the 660 is still uh, running some modern games. Now, obviously, this game is more geared towards a multiplayer experience, but it does actually look pretty good as well. So the 660 is hopefully, at least EA thinks it is able to keep up. We're going to be the judge of that. But that's our test setup, and it is worth noting we are running the game on an SSD, not a hard drive, though that shouldn't really affect the actual numbers much, but it's worth knowing. Now looking at the actual numbers here at 1080p on the low graphics preset, yeah, I was actually really impressed. I did not expect this game to not just run at 60 FPS at 1080p on the minimum recommended specs from EA, but it actually ran above 60 FPS in the vast majority of the time I was actually in the game. Occasionally, once in a while, it would dip into the high 50s, but for the most part, we're well above 60 here with an average FPS of 75, a 1% there at 47, and a 0.1% at 32. And anecdotally here, this was a really nice experience, which I just totally did not expect expect running at 1080p on the absolute minimum recommended uh, specs from EA. Now if we look at a little bit of captured footage here, what you should notice is uh, really that you're not noticing the system it's actually running on. What you're focused on, at least what I was focused on while I was playing this, was the actual game. And that's always a good thing when you're playing a game or when you're benchmarking a game and you for a bit actually forget that you're benchmarking a game. This actually happens to me a lot when I'm benchmarking Fortnite because this is a title that uh, once you get started, you get into the game, you kind of forget that a benchmark is out there running, and then you're just trying to do really well in the game, and that's kind of what happened here. Now, I will fully admit I am not good at this game. I haven't played one of these Star Wars games that has space uh, fighting in X-Wings and the TIE Fighters and all that sort of thing. I haven't played one of those games in a good long while, but I will say I was enjoying my time and I actually really like some of the things the game was doing with this title where you can divert energy to either make your craft a little bit faster or you can divert energy to make its uh, laser cannons punch a little bit harder. But the point here is I was forgetting that I was actually 
actually benchmarking the game. And that's really what I think developers should be going for when you're actually looking at recommending minimum specs. You recommend something that will definitely run the game and have a really good experience, which it seems like EA did here, to the point where I would actually think that for a lot of people out there running older generation i5 processors, because I believe on the Intel side of things, the actual minimum spec for the CPU is a Skylake i5, I am almost certain that you could get away with something like a Haswell Ivy Bridge or probably even a Sandy Bridge i5, provided that you have a decent enough GPU. It definitely looks like you could probably get away with a little bit less horsepower from the CPU, especially if you have a model that can be overclocked and you do overclock, or maybe it just runs higher clock speeds in general. Because remember, the original Zen architecture didn't have great IPC compared to Intel. So four cores and four threads, as long as you're getting close to a 1300X, or at least close to the Skylake i5s, then you should be in good shape there. So that's really about all I have to say about this title on the minimum system specs, and that is EA did a good job giving us an achievable minimum spec, a game that seems to run really well on the hardware they're recommending as a minimum to the point where if you have a PC that's either already right at that spec or maybe even slightly below that, you should be able to run this title just fine. And of course, keep in mind, you could always drop the uh, graphics graphics down a little bit further, especially with the resolution in case you don't quite have a GPU that matches up with a GTX 660. On the AMD side, by the way, something else that might uh, perform very similar to a 660, if you're sort of in that RX 460 two gigabyte card range, if you have a GPU that's similar to that card, that should be very, very similar to a 660, which should then give you uh, the opportunity to play this game with no problem. So if there are other titles out there that you want me to configure a system that has roughly the minimum system spec and take a look at the game. Let me know in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.